Well, Rick, it's fight week, and I know it's been a, a little while since you've been. Yeah, just, been the, saying, just, the, just talking the, about fight yeah, week. Yeah, just the eight month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, yeah, it's uh, first time around. He's not obviously, done me no harm, trust me, no. Well, we can see that anyway. I mean, the, the shape you're in now. I mean, uh, again, talk us through preparations for this because you were you were flying obviously ahead of the original date. What did it do to you then to, to have to switch off and get back on it again? I was heartbroken for a couple of days. I must admit, to be honest with you, July July second fell through. I'd um, I'd done um, a four month camp up to that point because obviously I was uh, when I first started my camp for 12, 13, 14 weeks out. I stepped on the scales. I was 15 stone four. So to get to where I got and the shape I was in and everything, it was it was absolutely heartbroken. But you know, they say things happen for a reason and I think it's happened for the better. That was my first training camp in 10 years where I was getting used to doing my weights, my bar bag, my body belt, my pads, my sparring and everything like that. So uh, I was feeling fantastic, but a little few aches and niggles as you'd, ex as you'd expect. But for this second camp, I started, you know, I went on holiday at Tenerife for a month. I had a proper, proper holiday, not like the usual Ricky Hatton holidays. And, um, Started where I left off. No injuries, no pains, no aches, no nothing. Sharper, faster, stronger. And in that time, I've inspired a lot of people, whether with, 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 with the weight or the mental health, or you know, it's been a tough time for people. And I think they've looked back and um, looked at what I've done and um, been proud of me and inspired them. So uh, yeah, I was devastated for a couple of days, but it went for nothing. And you. you made a lifestyle change I suppose have you anyway because you, you've got back into brilliant shape again is this something that's going to continue in one way shape or form I mean you're not going to be fighting again at a competitive level but are you going to just keep targets or how are you going to do it I'm just going to keep on top of what I've, what I've, what I'm doing I mean I mean I might put a few pound on from wherever where I'm sat in front of you at the minute but um no, I've got a certain, I've got a new wardrobe, and I've got rid of the old wardrobe, and I, and I don't want to go back to them old wardrobes. I'm 44 now, do you know what I mean? And although I've, I've breezed this camp, it's been absolutely brilliant. I can't believe how well it's uh, how well it's gone. But at the end of the day, I can't keep whipping five stone off at 44 years of age now. You know, it's absolutely it's going to kill me and put me in the put me put me down under. So uh, no, it's a lifestyle change and. Um, Listen, life slows down for us all sooner or later as we get a little bit older. You know, Ricky Hatton's not ready for his pipe and slippers, far from it, but life slows down and I've reached a point in my life where I'm just, you know, I'm enjoying more. I was, you know, when I was going out and partying and drinking, I was sick of feeling rough every day and feeling like shit and everything day. Now I feel great. Um, I'm, I feel positive. I'm, in, I'm inspiring people and... Um, Still having a little, you know, you know, a little pint here and there and that. But, you know, it goes without saying. But no, I think um, I feel Ricky Hatton's been happier now than he has been for years. So I want it to continue. That was fantastic. And for the the exhibition, you're going to come in around 11 and a half stone yourself and Barrera. You're weighing in. It's all it's all been treated very seriously, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's at 11 and a half stone, you know. So uh, I mean, I, I don't have to make the 10 stone weight as well, which is going to help, you know what I mean? And um, but, you know, I used to get in the ring at, you know, 11 stone. When I was in my prime, I used to weigh 10 stone at Lightwell to get in the ring at 11 stone. So you think, you know, it's only like, you know, I'll only be like four or five pound above what I would normally get in the ring at, you know. So it's, it's nothing's really changed. You just haven't got the um, inconvenience of getting right down to that 10 stone, thank God. But, uh, but no, um, no, this is going to be me for um, forever now. And um, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's going to be a great night. Do you know what shape Barrera's in? I haven't, you know, he doesn't post so much as much as me, but I mean, Marco um, is the opposite to me, actually. You know, he's always, he always, always looked after himself. He's been a model pro, and I know I have, but I've, I've had my me, me bad times and I've had my faults through the years. You know, but Marco's, I think, I would say Marco's in shape pretty much 24 7, and all he needs is a, is a good few weeks training camp, you know, and uh, I think uh, he would have worked hard, but I mean, obviously. With myself, it, it was always made, you know, I always give myself a mountain to climb. But I think Marco will be in fantastic shape. He's a very proud fighter, a very proud warrior. Uh, he looks after himself 24-7, where Ricky Hatton hasn't done in the past. So I think, uh, I think no, I think he's going to come. I think he's going to come prepared here. Yeah. Mm. So the night itself, you've got the Sky Bill first, obviously top of the bills, Natasha Jonas against the care, but there's some cracking fights. Obviously Brad Ray in this very gym has got a great fight. Tyler Denny, an English middleweight title fight. 
Yeah, uh, all, the, all the top fights on the card, Dalton Smith and everything else. So there's that bill first, and then everyone hangs on to see the hitman again. But yeah, that's the, it's that's the, the you know, it's, it's the, the boxer promotion first, and then uh, my promotion, you know, then, then we come on to finish the... Uh, to finish the night off, you know, so it's going to be a great night's entertainment and a great night's boxing, to be honest. You know, Natasha Jones is going for another world title, fair play to her, absolutely brilliant stuff she's doing for for, for, for Liverpool. Brad Ray in his uh, English title fight, first title fight against Tyler Denny, it's a good fight. I think these two are better than English title level, to be honest with you. I think they're worth even more than that, which... Uh, is a bonus for five fans, but Brad's training has gone absolutely second to none. I'm pretty much palling up with um, Brad side by side in, in training and got the good game plan sorted. And um, that's going to be a great night. You've got Fraser Clark, big heavyweight on the uh, on the bill. You know, got Smith who's on the bill. Um, and then um, Ricky Fatton. Well, not Ricky Fatton no more, but no, no. We've got, then we've got me to finish the show off. I think it's going to be a sensational night and I... Uh, I really can't wait, mate. Yeah, yeah. And what's it going to feel like then when you, you hear Blue Moon again in, in your arena, as it was known well, back I'm in the day? I'm, I'm, you know, people may see me as a toughie, but I'm a bit of a, I'm a, bit of a fucking crier, um, to be honest with myself. Yeah, I'm, um, it would suck a lot, but I, mean, I always used to get emotional when I feel the crowd, and because it's not been 10 years and because of what I've been through in that yeah. time space, it will be very, very emotional for me. Uh, my mum and dad will be at ringside for the first time in, you know, 18 years. Well, it's, it's, it, I suppose no, Costa Zoo was the last arena fight before the Sinchenko yeah, one, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, so it, it will be uh, very emotional. I've, you know, I've gone through a lot in my life. Great times, bad times, but, you know, the, the good times are back. And to be honest, you know, Ricky Hatton's never been never been happier there. I mean, I, I'd, I'd love to be able to turn the clock back and go to Vegas and lift world titles, but Ricky Hatton in himself mentally has never been better than he is at this minute. And... Um, I'm just looking forward to put a good show on, like uh, like I always I always did. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Fraser Clark there before. I didn't realise anyone liked Only Fools and Horses more than you. Yeah. I saw that little <laughs> clip of you two in, in, yeah, your, in your van. It was funny that I like Fraser. He's a good lad. He's done a lot of work. You know, and Campbell's gone to London. He's took Campbell under his wing, and they've worked together well. And and, and stuff like that. I really like him, and um, he's got the pedigree. Fraser got the pedigree. You know, I mean, he's a down-to-earth, nice lad, working-class, you know, type guy. He went to the, uh, went, you know, great amateur, massive amateur success. He's got all the pedigree there. And talking to him and seeing him, he seems he's got the heart, desire, the will, and the, you know, the, the intelligence. He's a good talker, and. Um, yeah, it'd be nice for the Manchester fans and, and for all the fans on, on, on Sky Sports to be able to see, uh, you know, the next heavyweight coming through because we've, we've got the best, haven't we, in this country. We have done for the last few years now and it's lovely to see the conveyor belt coming through of the, 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 the fighters that are going to step into their space. Yeah, you just mentioned Campbell there, though, of course. You've, you've just seen him in action at the weekend and he's getting better, isn't he? I mean, you can see the improvements with every fight. You must have been delighted to see that. Absolutely, you know what I mean? He, uh, he was... He, the best thing about the Campbell was he was he was going forward, solid defence, um, and his punch placement. Normally, you know, he, he'd throw that many punches. I think he's always started off great in his fights, but he's not been able to maintain it because of that hat and red mist that sometimes you know sets in. You know, so I mean, he, 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 but he knows. We've been telling him for the last couple of fights, and you know. And I said to him, I said, listen, you know, you're starting off well, you're making mistakes, but you keep making these same mistakes. We keep telling you, you keep doing it. We want it put in right this fight. And he did. And um, peach of a, you know, a left up to the body. And it was his punch placement. He didn't get close to his opponent and then just go whack, 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 like he previously does. He got close to his opponent, sit, 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 whack. And that's what we, me and Matthew want, you know, more from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did those body shots come from, eh? I don't know, yeah. I think I, I think he hit him with one of them when he was 15. Don't tell his mum, Claire, but uh, I think that's where he might have got it from. Pat Barrett did it to me when I was 15, so I did it to Campbell. And I tell you what, it did me good, and it didn't do uh, Campbell good the other night. It didn't do Campbell bad the other night. No, no, it was a great bill, and obviously Pat was there with Zelfer. It didn't happen for Zelfer, which was a real shame, but it, it was a brilliant bill for Campbell to be a part of. And I tell you what, I, I'm... I think you'll, you'll agree with this. If you ever want to show him a fighter to have a look at and try and take a few lessons off, Bivol, my God, that was some masterclass, wasn't it? Yeah, Bivol, you know what I mean? He's, you know, I think everybody, you know, his, his, his fight against um, Canelo, everyone went, wow, what a great performance, how mature, you know what I mean? He did, he counteracted everything Canelo did and for someone as good and versatile as Canelo, but everyone said, well, maybe we was too big, maybe Styles made fights, he just had the style to beat Canelo, no. 
no, he was great again. I think he's going to be one of the, I think he's one of the best pound for pound. Certainly is deserves to be the best one of the best pound for pound already. I think he'll probably even get better, and it's it's, it's brilliant to watch. And and back to to Zelfa, you know what I mean? He showed so much um, heart. Prove that he's worthy of being at world title level. You know, fantastic boxing ability. And then I, um, the wheels came off a little bit. He dug in, he showed tremendous heart, which you've got to prove at world title level. So he's proved his ability, he's proved his heart. He just went a little bit, you know, tits up, as we as, as we say. But I think he, he had a perforated eardrum, which affects all your, you know, your equilibrium, doesn't it? And all your movement and your balance and all, it affects I'll, um, I think that's equilibrium, that's right, isn't it? Well, go on with it. But no, uh, but you know what I mean? It affects you, do you know what I mean? And that might be the reason why he fails to start, but it doesn't need me to tell Zelfra. Pat will, Pat will know as well. He's proved he's got the ability. A little bit of a perforated, perforated eardrum in between, which wouldn't have helped, but he's dug in and dug in and dug in. He'll be back. And I remember um, a certain Andy Crawler who had a few speed bumps along the way, but he stayed at it, stayed at it. Where did he end up? So uh, you keep your chin up, Zelf. We can't be bigging Crawler up. He, he likes these. He likes these compliments to far too much, Rick. And but uh, now, well, there was, a, there was a, another Manchester, if you like. Anyway, world champion. We, we can claim Chantel Cameron because your old mate Jamie. Yeah, and fantastic. Was made up for Jamie. Text yeah. Jamie. She won fantastic. So we have a uni, un, unified champion, and to come from Manchester as well. Oh, absolutely, absolutely sensational. Absolutely sensational. And. Uh, Lots of big fights now on the on the line for her. Do you know what I mean? She's got all the belts. Great future ahead of herself. And I was made up for Jamie and Nigel. They've got a great stable there now. All the lads are coming through. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Another one for Manchester, yeah. Yeah, and just talking of Manchester, because we, we, we can never let you go without talking about City, because it's so close to your heart, obviously, and uh, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? Just ahead of the, the, the winter break, you'll enjoy the World Cup as well when you get your thing out of the way, but City, you must be delighted going there these days, are you? Yeah, I mean, it's that Champions League we want, don't we? I mean, we want the league, but I mean, it's the Champions League we want, and I've been saying I think we're going to do it for the last two or three years now, and we haven't done so. Dare I say it, dare I say it again, oh, this is our year. But I think with the players we've added, Haaland in particular, I feel more confident this year than any, but I'm not going to say it because he'll probably go bangers. But uh, but no, uh, and this weekend 2-1 against Fulham with an injury time winner. You know what I mean? United, when they were winning all their titles years ago, they ever they, they always pulled it back at the, at the death. And that's what good teams do. They used to say United was stuffy. They wouldn't. They played to the death. They played to the final whistle. A few years ago, City would play great and lose games. Now, you know, we're having a bit of a struggle. We're getting them in injury time now. So it's like ticking all the boxes. And what the way Pep's got us playing, the, you know, they add to the squad with Haaland. Grealish is coming good now. Um, fairly optimistic, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Come on with that Champions League, boys, yeah. And just a, a weird left of, left field kind of thought. Have you ever been approached about the jungle and all that kind of business? Because, again, just that's back now and it, it, it just seems to be getting bigger now. Or, you must have had calls for that kind of stuff in the past. Uh, I did do. I got asked a couple of times years ago and I wasn't really bothered because I was, I was cracking on with my boxing. And then after my boxing, there was... Um, I don't want to keep boring people about it, but there was a period there where my head fell off, you know, and and everything like that. But um, no, and the, the jungle is the one that I always, uh, I always, I always watch because I think it's in doing so you're achieving something. You know what I mean? It's not a load of bollocks like like some of them. You know, it's, it's like you're achieving something. You know, you're conquering your fears, going in the jungle, being away from your loved ones. You know, like it, it's like a, a training camp in the bush. <laughs> do you know? Do you know what I mean? So. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, my, my life has moved on from the boxing and the bad times and I'm in a nice, good, happy place. If the phone call come, I'd, I'd, I'd look at it. But I mean, um, I mean, first time I've been asked that question, <laughs> Dom, actually, to be honest. It's something traditionally I don't normally do because I'm not really, you know. I could see you do that one. Because yeah, yeah. as you say, I mean, obviously, Amir Khan did really well in it, didn't he? David Hayes been in it. And, uh, you know, there's this. Yeah, uh, I mean, Amir, Nick, in the, was yeah, yeah. the sausages, was there? But I could, I, I could definitely see you in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can have a look at it, can't we? So. In the meantime, anyway, you've got your own show on Saturday night and that's uh, that's back to what you, you really are looking forward to doing again, making that ring walk, having yeah, your fans there, putting on having a, them put, sing your name, all that business again. Yeah, it's going to be special. Well, the crowd, you know what I mean? Putting on a show for the for the crowd. As I mentioned, um, I think what I've done is inspired a few people, bearing in mind my age, the shape and what I've come through to do what I've done, so that's another plus. Sharing the ring with me, mate, Marco Antonio Barrera. We all know how good Marco um, was. I'm going to get the chance first hand to share the ring and find out just how good he was, so that's a dream in, it, in its... Uh, 
you know, in, it, in itself. And there in front of my Manchester fans with my family and my friends, and mum and dad at ringside. And, you know, it's, um, it's going to be an emotional night, but it's going to be a belter. Yeah. Well, enjoy it and enjoy your shit shirt party the next day as yeah, well, because it's, yeah, back, it's yeah, back to yeah. old school ways well, now, isn't it? I, I, I'll go if Andy Crawler doesn't, <laughs> because he can wear some shite him.